Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. That's Lenore Mollison. She's our special guest here today on Community Matters, and she is a prodigy. We've had her before in March of 2017, where Ian Davidson interviewed her on uh, Think Tech on the Go, I think it was. And um, she's taller and smarter and even better today, a year later, a year more later. So um, that was one song, okay? Um, and I'd like to ask you what the name of that song was, Lenore. That was Eruption by Eddie Van Halen. I wish I wrote that. I'd be so... <laughs> that, that song is the best I from him. <laughs> it's so fine. <laughs> and we're going to have more songs. What other songs are we going to have today? Well, we're going to be having the Steve Harvey look that I played on his show. We're also going to be having an original by me called Paz Boom. Um, it's about a kid that thinks he's a, like, nerd outside the his mind, but inside he's really the hero. And then lastly, I'm going to be playing some Metallica, the Four Horsemen. Okay. Wow. So I want to know more about you. I know that you're a, a student in, uh, what, late junior high school at Myron L. Thompson Academy, which is right down the block. Uh, I know you study, or rather practice, two hours a day, every day. Yeah. And, yeah. I, I know if I did that, I could play like you, right? Yes, definitely. Yeah, sure. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> And you've been playing for, what, most of your life now, huh? Yeah, seven years now. I started when I was six. Hopefully I can play until I retire. Well, not retire. Whatever that might be. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Get a long way to go. Don't rush it. Yeah, yeah. And, um, and um, you're, you're playing what kind of music? Uh, we know a little already, but could you define your genre? My genre consists of original shredding, um, fast songs, you know, like Event Sevenfold, Metallica, of course, yeah. and Eddie Van Halen. The, the, basically, the top shredders, Sinister Gates as well, you know, those okay. type of people. Is that, is that why they call you the Lenore the Shredder? Yes, that is correct. Okay, could you help me, because I'm really out of this kind of thing you're talking about. What is a shredder exactly? A shredder is when you play very fast, um, single notes or whole notes, depending on what type of um, shredding you like. Well, not shredding. <laughs> playing chords and playing shredding is different. Shredding is more fast tempoed, and playing chords is like slower. Blues is more um, typical of uh, playing chords, and shredding is more uh, like double double fast, like I Sonic. Saw, I saw that, yeah, that's not easy. I mean, you have to have a certain amount of virtuosity yes. to move that fast. But they also call you <clears throat> the ghost girl of underage thinking. I suppose that's different from underage drinking. Okay, yes, so, yeah. So what is the ghost, ghost girl of underage thinking? What is that, and why do they call you that? Back then, um, I used to do auditions for uh, TV and movie. 
There was a show called The River on ABC. It's canceled now, which is sad. I don't know why they canceled it. They cancel all the best shows. Don't, yeah. <laughs> That's but, true. <laughs> yeah. I played a dead Victorian girl who drowned her victims because she's searching for her mother. Um, I tried to drown a lot of people. Oh, I don't, I don't think you, you like that at all, actually, Lenore. My character does. <laughs> <laughs> did, you have to, did you have to go to Los Angeles or something to, to make the movie? Uh, no, it was here stationed in Hawaii. It was out um, in down west side, I think. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. All right. So you have experience on the screen then. Huh? Wow. You want more of that? Yes. Okay. All right. So what's the connection between the ghost girl and the music? I just figured it'd work. I mean, I, I kill myself because I'm super fast. Uh, and my, my hand falls off because I'm super, super fast. Yeah. Not to brag. No, I don't want to brag. I'm not. But how did that happen? How did, how did you get super fast? I mean, you know, people aren't necessarily born that way, are they? That you had to go through some kind of training and familiarity process where you got comfortable enough to get that fast, right? Tell us about it. There's something called endurance drills that you do every single day, and you use a metronome to to pace yourself. So you play chords, like I said before, um, to the metronome, and it speeds up more and more until you are able to play really, really. You just turn it a higher, a higher tempo, and you have to keep up with it. Mm hmm Yeah. Cool. And you do it like five minutes a day, or you increase your speed and time. And yeah, that's, that's how you go. Yeah, I like wind sprints. It's a really rush it. <laughs> yeah. So what are you studying in school in the Myron, Myron L. Thompson Academy down the block? Um, I am studying math. I'm doing computer literacy. I'm doing slope and graphs. I'm also doing science, and I'm learning about sharks. More specifically, what's inside the shark. <laughs> <laughs> doing well? Yeah, I'd say I am, considering I only got one C, so that's good. Okay, we don't talk about that. We're not going to talk no, about that. Yeah. No. What was the C in? English. <laughs> okay. Everything else you're doing well. Yes. Yeah, that's great. What about music? Is music in the program? Um, I th it is in the program, but not the type of music I like typically enjoy. You know, when I want to learn something, I go to the web, I go to YouTube, I look it up, I watch other people do it, and when I really want to learn something, I get a teacher and the teacher is one-on-one -on -one with me. The teacher is my mentor, my teacher. And, and in music, when I, when I was a kid, I had a little music, nothing like you have, but, um, and I had a teacher and he would come and see me and we would meet and he would show me stuff. Do you have, what do you do to learn this stuff? What do you, what do, you do on the web, for example? What do you do in terms of personal mentor, coach, counselor person? I actually have two teachers, Tommy Osuna, and I have Aaron Carey, who is in charge of Kylo Music School, where I play with my bandmate Noah. Um, for the web, I look up solos and then I just try to piece them out, and then I take them to Tommy, and he really helps me put some more technique into them. What is technique? I mean, for you. Technique for me is putting more flair into it, like putting more bends, more flourish, more. Um, more pacing, like I said before, for yeah. more technique. Give us an example of a flare or a flourish. Uh, one thing is like, uh, like that. Yeah, that's yeah. impressive, yeah. Thank you. So you have to, but you have to listen to, you know, you have to be mainstream. You are mainstream, no question about it. You're following what's going on out there. I wish I could say the same for myself. But how do you do that? How do you follow what's going on? How do you follow what other musicians are doing? How do you get to the center of the track? I typically go, well, I look at the top charts, like the top 10 bands and all those YouTube videos, like, yeah. hey, maybe I could do that. And then I look up one of their solos and then those, it's rinse, uh, repeat, and it's wash. Yeah. Okay. So. Do you play along with them? No, you just listen. Oh, I do try and play along with them, and if I really keep at it, I might be able to try and do the backing track and then play along with the drum beat. Ah, okay, okay. Now, what about what about other instruments at the same time? Do you, at home, when you practice for those two plus hours a day, 
are, are you playing with um, a recording of somebody else playing? Are you playing with another musician? Do you have a group that you play with? Um, how do you sort of bounce off other musicians? Um, I do play with uh, other people where we're underage thinking our band. Um, for the backing tracks and for the other instruments, I do try and play along with other people on the web, but it's usually recordings like on YouTube, um, sometimes Facebook if they put it out. So if I'm, if I'm you and I go on YouTube and I want to see something that appeals to me as a, as a learning experience, what do I search for? Uh, guitar chords, stop easy for the beginner. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> or like top 10 best solos and um, uh, bands and how to play this specific solo. So you're looking for excellence? Yes. How, I mean, that's really important. Um, you decided that you wanted to be excellent. You wanted to be a virtuoso. You, um, why? Why is that? What, what, what happened to you that made you feel that you had to do that? Well, for one, parents. <laughs> <laughs> Always I, helps. <laughs> yeah. I started out because my parents had a role, you have to pick one instrument for a year, and if you want to continue doing it, then we'll pay for it, we'll do whatever you want, and I chose that guitar. Nice yeah. yeah. Trying to get a like, right step in the direction. So I picked guitar, and then I discovered shredding a couple of years ago, and I was like, oh. Give me a close-up of that one more time. Oh. Good work. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I told you I was going to ask you, how has it been since March of 2017, a year and some months ago, for you? I mean, how have you changed? How has your worldview changed, if you can talk about that? And how has your music and your learning music changed in that last year? I have been going to more shows with my band Underage Thinking. We've had a very good streak so far. Um, last year we played at the Kidney Foundation for Walk on the Wild Side. We've also have been playing down in Kailua for the Habilitat, which plays a special heart, like place in my heart, because that was actually the first gig we played there like the first actual full-on gig. And then for me, I've been playing at the MMA events, like um, down in, Honol well, in Honolulu, yeah. like by the park over there. Yeah, what's that, you go with the band and sometimes alone, sometimes with the band, yeah. sometimes without. How many people are in the band? Four. Okay, Yeah. and are you the leader? Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay, all right, good, good. I want you to tell me. <laughs> all right, so we have a couple of minutes before our break here in the show. And I wonder if you could play song number two. Okay. This is actually the look I played on the Steve Harvey show, so get ready. Okay, I'm ready. <laughs> And we're going to take one minute to recover from that. <laughs> now, we'll come back and you'll play still another tune for us. Yes. We'll be right back here on Think Tech. We have this crazy thing going on today. I was just walking by and all these DJs and producers are set up all around the city. I just walked by and I said, what's happening, guys? They told me they were making music. There were a lot of people that claimed they had no musical talent and then sat down and kind of played some really nice sounds. Today, inspired musically about life. 
that I could play, so any chance to play at all, you know, that's my life. I love music. Yeah, that's how I do it. Hold your hand up. I want to see how big it is. It's okay. a little smaller than mine, but you reach right around that. <laughs> you got it all. <laughs> so, Lenore, um, that's the kind of song you play at a gig. Yes. How long is a gig? Where is a gig, the average? We typically play at bars, restaurants. Um, sometimes we'll play at a festival. Um, and all over, all over Hawaii, basically. Yeah. Are you, uh, are you recording also? Are you recording your music? We are in the progress of recording some of our music. Really? So far we've got one song down. Okay. You're making an album, is that it? Yes. Oh, wow. Okay. Or it's trying to. Trying to. Yeah. Okay. Well, when will we know? When, when can we find out? Not yet. Not yet. You'll come back on this show. <laughs> we'll play some more songs. Yes. And then you'll tell us. So I guess uh, what I wanted to ask you about in this part is um, you know where this fits in your life because obviously you're a prodigy, prodigy, Thank you. a prodigy, and you're a virtuoso, and it's only going to get better, even with small hands like that. <laughs> They'll get bigger, and so I guess the question I would ask is, uh, where where does it go for you? Is studying something in school, it's not the same thing, um, and you may do that. Veterinary medicine, was it? That was your other goal in yes. life? Yes, yeah. Um, go ahead. I'm hoping that this can become a backup plan, just in case if, for some reason, veterinary school doesn't work out, because it's going to be long and hard. Um, I'm hoping that I could actually use guitar to try and open up a place, a, a veterinary place, and then me work as the head doctor, the head uh, the surgeon. Uh, you mean music? Yeah, in, yeah. In the veterinary clinic? Yeah. You know, I, there, there was a movie not too long ago about a camel in Mongolia, and the camel was albino. It was a baby camel, and the mother didn't like that because it was unusual, so the mother wouldn't let the baby camel nurse, and the baby camel was wasting away. Okay, and they tried so hard to keep the baby camel alive. And ultimately, they found the secret in this wonderful movie. And the secret was, guess, 
music. And it somehow gave comfort to the mother and the child camel, and then they bonded up and the child survived. All about music. So there's a relationship between animals and music, don't you think? Yeah. That'll be a really interesting veterinary clinic you open, I think. <laughs> <laughs> So if you had your druthers, would you pick the one or the other, or the both? Where does the music fit if you had your, you know, your druthers on this? Um, music would fit, I'd make my own hours and music would fit like in the morning and then at night. And then maybe along the way I could host like an animal festival and then I could play there. It's like, hey, I also play guitar. <laughs> <laughs> so is it a career for you, you think? You think it might be? Yeah, it could. It, I think it could definitely be a career. And how do you see it unfolding? I mean, you're you're not even in high school yet. Um, there's a lot. There's a long way to go. I can tell you, I, I sat in my in my class in in New York where I grew up in junior high school. I, Simon was over there and Garfunkel was over there, and I knew them both. And who would ever have thunk that they were going to be what they became to be? And it was because they kept on doing it is what, you know, they kept on working together because you, you learn a lot. You learn about your own music and make it better. So, I mean, is that the kind of plan you have that you can keep on doing this until you get so good that it becomes, you know, a career? Yeah, I really, I really hope that guitar really works out with me because it, it plays a big part of my life. I've been doing it for seven years, so I took it away. It's kind of like, taking something out of a heart or something. Yeah. What do, you, what do your parents prefer, Lenore? Do they give you direction on this at all? Sometimes my mom has to tell me to practice with, like longer. It's like, hey, I did this. No, you have to practice more. But I want to hang out with do that. It's like, no. Wait, we put seven years into this. It's like, OK, fine. <laughs> How about the neighbors? What do the neighbors say? Because some of this equipment, you can't see it here with the cameras, but it makes a fair amount of noise. How do the neighbors feel about it? Are they, are they behind you? Are they supporting you? Yeah, they are supporting me. I try to keep it low because we live in a valley, and then if you put one noise out of that, it's just going to bounce around the islands to the other side. Yeah, 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 yeah. And what about your band? How long do you think it'll last? Uh, it's, I guess they're all your age in school together. Are you all in, in uh, Myron L. Thompson together, or are they in different schools too? They're all in different schools. Um, my drummer, Noah, and my bass play, play, player, Callahan, they both go to KIS. And then my other singer, Sabia, she goes to another online school. Oh, good. So everybody's in this kind of um, innovative schooling system, one kind or another. Yeah. So that's pretty good. Do you think you'll stay together? And if so, how long? Because, you know, it's hard to stay together as you get older. Yeah. You know, family and then growing up and all that stuff. Um, I really hope that we stay together for a long time, but I don't really want to, like, try and say, we're staying together for this long. I don't care what you guys are up to. But yeah, I hope we stay together until we get famous. <laughs> oh, oh, that. Yeah. <laughs> how will you get famous? How, how how do you see the path to fame? I think it's just putting stuff out there, and that's just putting stuff out there and like try and be more. Hey, look at me! I'm doing this. Than just like, oh, I play guitar, but I don't want people to think that I do this. Like, uh, like don't be insecure. Just like try and be yourself and put. Uh, your talents out there. Well, I want to make one thing clear, Lenore. You have to come back here. We have Definitely. to pepper the internet with your <laughs> music and uh, and um, you know sort of watch you grow into a career on this. You know that would be really fabulous. Yeah. Because I think that really should be in your future. And if so, I mean, would you make a, a career choice for college, for example? Um, to go to a school where they were going to teach you music? Would you try to get into Juilliard or some other performing arts uh, school so to, to, you know, to be exceptional or to find an, an education which can make you even more exceptional? I just want to get into college. Like, what step like, at a time, eh? Yeah. You yeah, have to study so, English, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, but if you go you know, to college, and I'm sure you will, um, will, you, will you want to study music there as well as veterinary medicine, for example? Yeah, definitely. Because, you know, I mean, if, like I said before, music is a very big part of me. Yeah. And, and if you go to college and you do a little music, of course you would anyway, whether it was yeah. studying it or not, 
Would you, you think you'd try to establish another band? Yeah, yeah, I think I could handle it. Yeah, what's it like to be a band leader? Because that's different than just being in a band, isn't it? You have to be the center of it somehow. Yeah, well, it's kind of, it's kind of difficult a little bit because you have to like sing and then play and like announce what you're doing without like completely falling down and then like ah. Yeah, yeah. So, so you, you have to lead the music. Yes. And, and then you have to be the center of the group so they all come around when they're supposed mm -hmm. to come around. Yeah. I, you know, I, when you played the first song, that was that was without singing. Um, and uh, the second song, that was with singing. So where does singing fit? Are you, are you getting coaching on singing also? Are you making special efforts to develop your voice? Because, you know, voice training, not so easy. And having a voice that, you know, is memorable, that's not so easy. What are you doing on that score? Well, I have had one lesson before, but we haven't really gotten back to it. I've just been, like, trying to do scales and, like, trying to get my voice more confident. A little bit, because you know, I'm getting older, and then my oh, voice yeah, is getting. Oh, I'm so sorry yeah. for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So right now, I'm just trying to figure out how like uh, strong my voice could be, and like how low it could go, and how you know. Do you have you have a perfect pitch? I I'm a little rusty with the higher notes, and but I've got a. I think I could do a pretty good scale. Yeah. So which is more important to you, the, the singing or the, or the playing? Guitar, definitely playing, because if you, you can sing, but playing and singing is kind of hard, you know? Yeah. Well, singing and playing, you have to worry about the lyrics, and you have to remember what pitch it is, and you also have to worry about, wait, am I on the seventh fret? Am I on, what, wait, what chord am I playing? Yeah. Now, what kind of guitar is that? This is a Floating Bridge Hellraiser Schecter. Uh, it's got a locking system right here, and that uh -huh. helps the tuning. Uh huh. You don't have to tune it every minute that way. Yeah. Yeah. This is fine tuning as well down here oh, no. okay. to try and help if it goes like a little off. I don't, what did you call it again? A Hellraiser? Yes. You know, this is a family show, Lenore. <laughs> <laughs> and you have another one too, right? Mm -hmm. What's the other one? The other one is a Ibanez. It's also a floating bridge. It's got the same locking system. The neck is actually quite thinner, so um, there's differences as well. Like the uh, pickups are a little different. There's three in them instead of two, and also uh, the locking system and the uh, other fine tuning is much more harder to do. And your favorite? This one. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay. But you can do. You can do virtuoso on both of them. Yes. So I'm going to ask you to sing one more song going out. <coughs> Is it going to be a voice and instrument or, or, or just instrument? It's just going to be an instrument because... And what's the name? The name is Four Horsemen by Metallica. Okay. Well, thank you so much for playing for us, Lenore. Thank you so much. This thank is you. Lenore Mollison. She's going to play us out.